So, Josh, Doc Stetter, great to see you. It's been hey. how long? It's been five oh. years, six years? Oh. Since since I've seen you? I think, didn't we have like a Malagash yeah. alumni party or something at Jenny yeah. Amherst? Uh, I think that was last Yes, time. that was like five or six. Oh, man. Actually, I think... It's at, yeah, it's about five or six years ago. Yeah, you're right. But I saw yeah. you, you were on the island last, was it last summer you were on the island? We briefly got coffee together. Not last summer. That was a while oh, ago. Oh, yes, that's right. It was two <laughs> summers ago because uh, we were, we, yeah, anything the past two years, I think for most people. I, that might have been like four or five summers ago too, man. Oh, really? Yeah, that was a while ago, I think. Yeah. Okay, I forgot my age just recently anyways, so uh, I forgot how old I actually was. My yeah, age. are you older than me? A little bit? Just by a little bit. Like, I think a month. Isn't it your birthday in August? I'm August. So I'm yeah. 37. Yes. I'm, I'm 37 as well, but I like July. 84, the best year. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> well, welcome officially to the Malagash Bible Camp podcast. You're either number 11 or number 12 by the time oh, everything awesome. is done on this. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for uh, having me. I will say just quickly, Malagash Bible Camp exists to glorify God by promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ, by operating a uh, year-round and summer camping ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, a Malagash Bible Camp, the ministry of Malagash Bible Camp, I I've said many times on the podcast, is probably the number one driver of my spiritual growth in my life. Mm -hmm. So I I'm quite passionate about it and, and serve on the yeah. executive team right now. And uh, we served, what? Three summers, four summers together there? Yes, it was. Uh, 2013 to 2015. No, 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 no. Mistaken. Oh, no, sorry. Not 2003. <laughs> yeah. 2005. <laughs> Again, yeah, there yeah. I go. I'm losing losing three, track of four, my... five. So I think I was there 2002, three, four, and five. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. That's gotcha. right. Very cool. So yeah. tell me a little bit. That's what we're here is just to share stories about mm -hmm. how camp has touched our life some funny stories, some memories, some spiritual growth that we've occurred, that sort of thing. So just quickly, um, I'll give you kind of, I'll ask you to do a formal introduction of yourself and kind of where you are right now in life. But just quickly, how does Malagash touch your life um, through time? Oh, man. Uh, Malagash Bible Camp has been such a crucial part, for, as you mentioned already, uh, a crucial part of my uh, growth um, and just influencing me, surrounding me with with people who love Jesus and, uh, and, and just uh, centering me, I believe on the scriptures. Um, mm. and that has been such a, a key, uh, formative moment for me. I mean, uh, I firmly, um, uphold the Bible camp, uh, because I think in, in any place, really, if it's centered on the word of God, I, I firmly believe that that will have an impact. Um, and that's, right. that's one of the things that that's really inspired me is that, um, you know, uh, when it comes to, to ministry, uh, we can get so caught up in, you know, all the, the flashy uh, things and miss out on what's the most important. And I, I think it's centered on the word of God. I, I think it was actually Martin Luther was not to get too historical. Well, Martin Luther said, Martin Luther said about the reformation, you know, he said the word did everything. I did nothing. And I, and I, I, I yeah. I keep thinking about that, um, about in my life, how that has impacted me. And cause that's, I, you know, um, I think that's one thing that about Malagash, the conversations that you and I have had, you know, over the mm -hmm. years and that I've had with others, um, just how formative that has been for me to be able to, to be able to enter into those deep discussions and discuss passages and learn from the speakers and the directors and the other staff and, and just grow um, together. Um, I'm also uh, a very, I appreciate um, nature and solitude, and I find Malagash has been a great place for that for me. Every it's time aesthetically I- aesthetically pleasing. Yes, absolutely. Every time I get back there, it's just like, oh, okay. I was, I was actually just back there like uh, a month ago, and uh, you know, just to be able to step back on at the camp. What were you there for a month ago? I was speaking for uh, Halifax Christian Academy, their um, high school. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I got over there. Uh, Matt uh, called me and uh, I managed to get over there uh, and uh, be able to share with the students there. So it was, it was great to be back there. It always is. And, you know, 
Um, you know, there's there's a word, and when I say the word, some people are going to think like new age and hippie and, and, and meditation and all that stuff, but there's a word that's going around, and again, I'm going to say it in, in a, yep. what I deem to be a biblical context, but the word is mindfulness, mm. yep. which is being like in the present, consciously in the present. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I think Malagash, because of its beauty, mm-hmm. you know, I think, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm addicted to my phone. <laughs> I'm addicted to my yeah. phone. Now, yeah. granted, for six months, it has not accompanied me to the bedroom. So mm-hmm. my phone was on my <laughs> counter. That's and, great. Uh, Good and practice. that's where it charges, and, I, and it doesn't go to bed with me. Mm-hmm. But still, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm addicted to it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you hear that little ding, ding, ding. And yeah. there's something that just switches in your head. Oh, I got to go check whatever it is. It just happened. And whether you're in front of your family or your kids or whatever it is, obviously things are more important, but something just, oh, I got to go check to see what that is. I don't know if you have that feeling, but I certainly yeah. have oh. that. Feeling. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and it's times like that or places like Malagash that, you know, uh, you get out to see what God has created, obviously. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to uh, shortchange that. It's so often we can be... Um, we can just forget what it is we we have in front of us. We you know we surround ourselves with indoor uh, activities and things that man has made. And you know there's so much incredible glory. You were talking about God's glory. I mean we we see it in in that revelation of of nature. And I think that that's key. And so what better place to go see God's nature and hear from God's word? Those two right. aspects of revelation that um, you know I think are just so crucial for right. spiritual formation and yeah. you, you speak of mindfulness you know and the phone you know uh, very very accurate uh, I'm in the same same boat I think it was uh, I heard um, I think I heard or read a quote once John Piper said you know one thing that we'll know about this is my paraphrase but one thing we'll know about uh, you know um, Facebook and Twitter and the last day is that prayerlessness was not for lack of time you know yeah, um, and I and I think that that's um, I say that because Malagash has been a place where I can just say even um, as far as getting away to have time to pray, um, you know, in and stepping out is is a crucial aspect. Um, I think of spiritual formation and growth. Um, you know, to rest. Well, that's one of the that's one of the things. It's difficult to be mindful. It's difficult right. to be in the present, yes. conscious. Yeah. And Absolutely. we are trained to be distracted easily. Right. That's what I find about me. I'm distracted easily. Right. And, and I certainly the phone makes it more difficult. And, you know, I think about my children going through schools and not like mm. everything's just flashy and this and this and this and this. And this. I'm going to be like, my goodness, like they're just not going to be able to ever be mindful because they're constantly being distracted about things. Yeah. But I think that's one of the special things about Malagash is you can leave everything going to walk through the woods or go down to the beach or go by yourself just you and jesus yep. and be mindful and be in the present and yep. hear from the lord yep. and uh that's been a special part of you know uh, we haven't talked about that much on the podcast we talk about the speakers and the camping but the nature that's there how beautiful it is allows you to really be mindful and meditate yep. while you're there, right yeah. yeah, and I, I, I totally agree. I think that's good. And, and I appreciate, again, your disclaimer that when we talk about mindfulness or meditation, we're not talking about like this, like sitting cross-legged going home, yeah. you know, like it's, yeah. we're talking about this, like chewing it over in our minds. And I think that's crucial. You know, someone once said to me, I think when I was going through a hard time in life is how, how do we bridge the gap between what we know, like what we know and what we do or how we live? Um and they said that, you know, the way to do that is meditation and, and specifically on God's word, you know. And so, um, yeah. you know, to be able to take God's word and to to implant it in our minds and allow it to just to chew on it, you know, uh, to work it through in our minds. And the more we spend time in the word of God, the more it starts to just come out of us naturally, you know. Mm. And I think that, uh, again, Malagash is a great spot for that. And you speak of you know, getting uh, down on the beach or, or going for a walk, you know, I can think of many times I've ended up there or in the chapel just by myself. Yeah. You know, that's just a great spot, you know, where I've gone there with my guitar or with uh, the scriptures and just been able to um, really be intentional. And even, you know, even as I say that, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I feel that burden. I think back to what that was like when I was, you know, in my 
early 20s or teen years. And, and now here I am, 37. And, know. and, you know, I'm like, man, I long for more of that. You yeah. know, just even it's a good reminder of like, oh, wow. Like, I remember what that was like. Um, and so, I don't know, I guess it's an important thing to, to keep in mind that we don't, we don't waste those opportunities. Those are the moments that actually I think back to and I'm like, man, I want more of that. I don't yeah. look at what I'm doing right now and, and the busyness and the constant going from one thing to the next. And like, I want more of that. I'm right. saying it's I, distraction. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned going through the woods and things like that. One of my earliest memories of you, I don't know if you recall it. <laughs> this was at family camp. Yep. Um, we, we weren't on full-time staff yet. I think we were, we were on, on volunteer staff, or, yep. I think. And it was during family camp, and they were playing staff hunt, and we were staff. Do you recall this? And we went back in the woods uh, behind the chapel, and we climbed a tree. Do you remember yeah. this? Yes, I think and, I do. Uh, we were like 20 feet high in this tree. Yeah. And uh, this is the first time I think we really got to know each other. Mm. I think we were in grade 10, if I recall. That... And, yeah, you might be. Yeah. And I remember like I had just uh, uh, like I had had my first girlfriend. OK. And uh, I think you had had just had your first girlfriend. <laughs> and both of us. Uh, I don't think we're necessarily, you know, we weren't depressed that our girlfriends dumped us or anything like that. <laughs> but we were just talking about, oh, yeah, I used to have a girlfriend. It didn't work out. Mm, yeah. And we were just talking about what grade 10s talk about up in the tree. And then it led into spiritual things, and we started mm -hmm. talking about spiritual things. And uh, yeah. do you recall that? That's my first I, earliest I, memory of you, I think. I, re I might not recall the content, but I do remember sitting up in a tree. And maybe this happened numerous times, you know, over our time working together on staff is is ending up in a tree, you know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. most counselors. And just finding that time to just whew, decompress, chat about yeah. what's really on your heart. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, grieving <laughs> a little bit together. Too. Yes, grieving. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's my earliest memory of you, and that yeah, that was awesome. fun. And uh, I got a tick. I remember that day from being up that tree. I so remember I that. Like, I remember oh, you do. That. Okay, I do remember it that. It was in yeah. me for a couple of days. We were just <laughs> blessed that I don't think uh, Lyme disease had made yeah. it to Nova Scotia by then. But yeah, uh, wow, we got her out with. Uh, I think they burnt it out. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that we yeah. took like a match or something and burnt a match it out. on the back yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> came up the other yeah cool, cool other great things you can take from camp you know oh yeah so uh <laughs> you know that was 20 years ago Oof. yeah that was 20 years ago that's so crazy. what's happened in your life since camp like where <laughs> are you now and what are you up to where am i now uh well i'm uh, currently at my home in prince edward island um uh, so following, I guess I should say, uh, following those high school years, um, I went to, um, following, uh, high school, I went to Briarcrest College in Saskatchewan, uh, mm -hmm. Port, Saskatchewan, and I, I took a degree there for four years. Is it still called Briarcrest? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still Briarcrest College and Seminary. Um, and so I was there for four years, um, and uh, I worked at Malagash on full-time staff those years while I was a student mm -hmm. at, at Briarcrest, and uh, um, met my wife there. Uh, she's from Saskatchewan, Krista, and um, yeah, and we've been married now for 15 years, going on 15 oh. years. So uh, that's exciting, and, and she's been awesome. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so after... Um, after college, I worked at a church in Regina for five, six years, um, and uh, as a youth pastor, youth and music pastor in Regina at Faith Baptist Church. And then um, about, uh, I, I spent a year just actually going to uh, Seattle, and uh, I was actually taking a training class at Mars Hill, um, oh, which is really? interesting. That's yeah, it's really interesting because that's you know big in the christian world right now with the i the just podcast. finished the rise and fall of mars hill uh, it's been so good <laughs> oh here's the thing i'll stop you and i probably shouldn't stop you but yeah. i'll say this mark driscoll mm -hmm. still in my books mm. is the best bible teacher i've ever heard mm, interesting yeah yeah 
He, and he, I align with him theologically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I still listen to his teaching. Like mm -hmm. he's at a different church now and I will yep. still listen to his yep. current sermons. Yep. Yep. You know, I understand he's been a bit of a bully and has an anger problem and all that sort of stuff. So yep. let's maybe talk about that for a second. And then we'll sure. go back to your story for a second. Sure. God uses fallen people. Absolutely. I, if he can speak through a donkey and most people use the, the other term. Yeah. <laughs> he, can, yeah. he can certainly speak through me and through others. Um, you're absolutely right um, in the sense that Marcus School is a very um, gifted individual. Um, I'll, I'll say that as far as a communicator. Um, and, you know, uh, God is you. I, and I'll say that like God used him in my life. I, now, uh, in a sense, did you to, ever meet him? Did you meet him? face to face? No, no. It, it's interesting. I, I was down there at his church taking a training uh, program, but not never met the guy because uh, he was off. But I got you know, to see a little bit of the inward working of the, of mm -hmm. um, the church and, and met some really great people there and uh, really appreciated uh, so much the things I learned from them there. Um, however, I, I will say that there's a tendency in, in Christianity, especially um, to elevate uh, mm -hmm. individuals to a place where, um, where, well, we, we make celebrities, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that um, uh, we, we base that on success. And, uh, again, just something that the Lord's been really working on in my heart the last couple of years is just this principle that's been going around that it's, God has not called you to be successful. He's called you to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's been really key, uh, for me, even as I've considered this, uh, podcast, um, you know, what does it look like to not be successful, but to be faithful? Um, obviously, we well, want to I'll say reach this. many people. Yeah. Noah is in the hall of faith in Hebrews 11. Right. And, yeah. and it says Noah was a preacher mm. of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It took him more than, a, I think it took him more than 100 years mm. to build the ark. Mm. And he was a preacher and had zero converts. Yeah, we don't hear much about that in in scripture, right? Like we like no. we obviously we hear he, he's a preacher of righteousness, but you don't you don't get into the like okay, what was those hundred years like? <laughs> you know, like, I know we hear about the but, flood, but yeah, he preached, repent, yeah. repent, repent. There's a storm coming. The end of the world is coming. Repent. Yeah, he yeah. was faithful, but not successful. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. terms of. Yeah. getting converts if, if we're measuring success that way you know absolutely yeah, yeah. and so my, my take on it like with the, the the driscoll thing is is um just from uh you know things that i've experienced and that i've uh, encountered is that uh it's very easy for the pastor to make himself um indispensable um and mm -hmm. to to get uh to to you know, spiritual abuse is a, is a real thing. Uh, yeah. I'll just say that very clearly um, because, right. you know, uh, people expect pastors to be on a, another level. Um, and I'll just say as a pastor, um, you know, uh, the Lord is, has called me to, to preach the word and, um, you know, to, to make that known and to, to equip the saints for ministry, uh, as Paul says. But, but at the same time, you know, I am so much, if I, if I ever, get to the place where I don't recognize my need for grace and yeah. my need for humility and the ability of others to speak into my life and to be, keep me accountable to, to, to really submit myself to other people who I know and trust who can say, you know, Josh, like you're, you're, you're not healthy right now. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I think that that's, we, we, we then create, um, this, this, um, uh, this cocoon of, well, what really just ends up to be something that's not life-giving, but actually just leads to death, honestly. And, yeah, it's true. You know, and so, I, I, mean, uh, I mean, for all the, the things that we can um, say about, uh, you know, the, the good things that we can see, there's also, we also have to be accountable as pastors, and we have to really, really uh, be aware of what it is we're saying and how we're going about things. And, um yeah, putting Jesus. Yeah, I, I struggle me. sometimes with. I'll give you this example, and I might not say this perfectly. Mm. Uh, we know what happened to Ravi Zacharias. Right. 
you know, super sad situation. Yeah, absolutely. However, if I'm coming across some of his teaching on how to speak to an atheist about this or this or this, now I, I think they've taken all of his teaching down. Yeah. Um, but if I come across that, I'm still like, well, I can glean things from that. Yeah. Like he was still a phenomenal teacher yep. and understood, you know, how to evangelize and, and all that sort of stuff. Yet his lifestyle did not match up at all. And that's hard to reconcile. It really mm. is hard to reconcile. Yeah. Yeah. Part of me is like, man, if, if all of us were judged by, and again, his was a, I mean, uh, to elevate certain sins, but it was, it, it was, you know, vile sin. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But I'm still going to glean what I can glean from him, you yes. know, and I feel the same way about Mark Driscoll. And that's why, I feel the same way about King David, you know, so right. uh, like, how do you reconcile yeah. those sort of things when, you know, the teaching is really good. The preaching yep. is really good. Yep. Um, people, there's fruit. Yeah. Mm. sometimes there's areas in people's lives that are very, very messy, if not yes. sin and vile sin. You know, I think, I think my take on it would be, um, so I, I, I've tried to caution myself against um, just recommending anyone to mm -hmm. anyone, <laughs> if you know what I mean, yeah. especially without first knowing them. Because uh, like I can say for me, I, I, I don't listen to Mark Driscoll anymore, um, you know, personally, because I, I you know, uh, I know that there's a, there's, there's, I personally think that he's disqualified himself personally. That's my, my stance on the issues. I think he's disqualified himself um, from ministry in what he's, uh, he's not been above reproach in, in what the characteristics are uh, in first mm -hmm. Timothy. And that's, that's where I would go with it. But however, um, uh, and so I, I want to be careful, not again, not to say that we can't learn something from, him um you can't learn something i can learn something from anyone like i learn from my kids constantly you mm -hmm. know and they are just as much um you know in need of grace you know um uh, i think where what the rabbi zacharias and mark driscoll thing should remind us of is number one the 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 sinfulness of sin and that mm -hmm. might seem kind of redundant but um you know we we don't see that we don't recognize that like s sin is a heinous crime and we will not recognize the 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 um the weight of it the weight of it until we recognize first and foremost the glory of god mm -hmm. and you know and i think that the more we invest ourselves in seeing the glory of god and understanding the holiness of god the more we start to see how messed up sin actually is that it profanes who he is and profanes mm -hmm. his name and then as a result, like it just, you know, we start to realize, wow, we, we, all we have is grace. I mean, I had someone once uh, show or, or talk to me about, um, you know, what is discipleship essentially? What, what's the Christian life look like? Well, the Christian life is, is in three ways. I'd say um, me recognizing how great and awesome this God is who has created me, who has made this world and how holy he is. That means set apart, different from me he is um, and how the Bible reveals him. And the more he grows in his holiness and greatness, the more I start to recognize my own sinfulness, like Isaiah in Isaiah six, you know, like, woe is me. And, and he sees the Lord and like most people in scripture yeah. they fall down and they're, they're freaked out. And, and terrified. That, they're terrified because they, they've, they've, uh, had an encounter with the holy god and and we are sinful broken people and the more my my knowledge of his holiness grows the more my knowledge of my own sinfulness grows and that only causes my knowledge of grace to grow mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. this holy god had did not uh he 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 could have just left me in my sin and yet in his grace he chose you were to dead die. Yeah, you were dead in your trespasses and sins, but now you've been brought alive in Christ. And so, yeah. I, you know, um, I think that's the Christian life and an increasing uh, depth of uh, understanding God's holiness, our own sin and grace. I so there's a verse in uh, Colossians. Yeah. And I quote it, it says, just as you received Christ 
so walk in him. Yes. Yeah. So I think that, you know, we received Christ from the, by the gospel, God's good news of grace given to us. Yeah. You know, and, and we were moved and, and transferred from darkness into light. You know, we received Christ. So walk in him. Mm -hmm. So then the Christian life has to be just replaying the gospel in our lives yeah. over and over and over Absolutely. again. Absolutely. About, we don't, we don't okay, know the gospel, right? I'm a like, sinner in need of grace. Yeah. I'm a sinner in need of grace. Yeah. I'm a sinner in need of grace. Yeah. And you, and you know, it says from grace to grace, yeah. you know, and, and we don't sin that grace may increase, but it's like, that's the only way we're, we're saved by grace. Right. And we are, and we are, you know, we live by grace. We walk by grace. Right. right. Well, and that's, and you're absolutely right. I, uh, you know, that's why I firmly believe that we preach the gospel to Christians. Like there's no, the yeah. gospel's not this gate that, okay, we've crossed over now into the Christian life. And now we just kind of leave you know jesus died on the cross for your sins we leave that behind and we just keep going and try and be a better person that's not the gospel like the gospel yeah, is yeah. for all of life like we're yeah. constantly needing to recognize our own sinfulness god's holiness and his grace towards us um yes and so i think that um you know again that that is just so crucial we don't ever outlive or outgrow the gospel um you right know, it's, it's absolutely crucial and I, and I, again i appreciate how you say mark driscoll you know you believe is disqualified and yeah, yeah. i can appreciate it i can appreciate how you're in that camp mm. um it's it is tough though when mm. to disqualify someone <laughs> you right. know what i mean so right. uh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to figure out the answer and it might be an individual answer for different people, but right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and, and yeah, that's, that's, that's simply my, my understanding there. Um, yeah. I, I take it. Um, now again, that's to say, I, I, that's, that's not to say I haven't learned anything from him. Uh, yeah, I have. And so, so finish the story then you're, you're, you actually yeah. said that under some of the teaching you're in, you said in Seattle or. Yeah, I was in Seattle. I would fly there um, uh, once a month for, uh, almost a year and I uh, had some great you know some great opportunities to connect with uh, different people um, there and we were taught by you know so, like Matt Chandler taught one of our you know seminars That's Paul cool. Tripp, Wayne Grudem some of these other guys um, you know as well and so it, so it was it was great uh, in that way um, and and I, I left really encouraged um, from there um, and and that was a really great time for me I went to from there uh, the lord called me back to uh, prince edward island which is where i am now to serve at a church for eight years uh, and that's where i was uh, serving in montague and charlottetown for eight years and uh, so i finished there last year and i'm now currently um, at uh, a church in charlottetown serving as interim lead pastor mm -hmm. uh, at least until february um, and so I'm, I'm and then it's here. living the gospel again, I guess. And then it's yeah. living the gospel. It's living, uh, walking by faith and not by sight, I guess. So, yes. uh, it's every step is, uh, you know, my, my family and I were in this interesting stage of like, okay, what do you have for us next? God, like, yeah. um, you know, and so tell me about your family. How, uh, how many yeah. kids do you have now? So I am, uh, I'm married to a beautiful woman, uh, Krista. Um, and uh, I think she's better at basketball than you, if I recall. Yeah, I, she is much better at basketball than <laughs> I will say. She is much more uh, in line of those things. So uh, we, uh, and I, sadly, I'm sure that I've taken her away from the basketball thing more so than she would like. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so um, uh, yeah, I'm married to Krista. I have been for 15 years. We have uh, three children at home with us. Uh, we have a girl named Ella and she's, uh, Eleanor, she's, um, she's 10 years old now, soon to be 11. Okay, um, wow. her son Emmett is, uh, he is nine years old. Um, and then we have a little fiery redhead named Jude and he is uh, five years old. He just turned five last month. So. Oh my, you're in yeah. for it. The next yes. five years are going to be just, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And we homeschool to top that on. So okay. that's, that's uh, you know, my wife is, uh, you know, uh, decided to homeschool. She, she resisted it for so long. And uh, it just seems like every person she met, they'd be like, you should homeschool. Do you homeschool? And, and she's like, of course you think I should. Or of course you homeschool. And so she, 
uh, she just uh, really got the sense that the Lord had led her to this and she's got an education background. She does right. incredible work. So that's her, her full-time gig. Homeschool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She does. She picks up a little bit of work. She's working, um, to do some, um, keeping the books for my brother's business. Um, they run okay. a business. So, uh, okay. Is your brother in PEI? Yeah. All, all three of my brothers are all in PEI right now. So oh, okay. yeah, we're that's all back good. on the Island. So yeah. Are you, are you pretty close to each other? Yeah, yeah, we, I would say we are, like, we're, uh, you know, we do family gatherings quite, quite a bit, and so it, it's great to uh, have family on the island, and my parents are still here as well, so we're still very cool connected, so, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Now, I know we, we talked about this beforehand, and I know it's sensitive, but you said you have three that are currently with you. Yes. Do you want to tell yeah. me that story? Yeah, so um, in 2014, um, so each of our kids, it's, it's interesting, are, is every two years apart, except for between my two sons, uh, they're four years apart. Um, my, in 2014, we were expecting uh, and, uh, a, um, a little girl, and um, she died. Um, my wife went full term, and she was stillborn. Um, so... Um, yeah, she went into labor and there was no heartbeat. And so that was, that's been a, a very, very difficult. Um, when I heard that, Josh, yeah. I wept for you. Yeah, was I, so I appreciate bad. that. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that so much. Yes, it is. Were you, know, you I, was it, and I'm sorry to be so no, insensitive, so stop no, me. No, not at all, you. not at all. No, we're good to talk. Was it a surprise at birth or did you know there was a possibility that this could occur or was it just a big surprise? It was a surprise. Um, oh, my wife went into labor and we went to the hospital um, and we found out there that the nurse essentially couldn't find the heartbeat. And so she went to get the doctor. The doctor came in and essentially just said, I'm sorry. So, um, so we just fell apart and that yeah. was really, really hard, but um, God is good. <laughs> You know, and we, we walked through uh, an incredibly difficult time. We went for some counseling down in Indiana um, for some biblical counseling. And I can tell you that was uh, incredible for us. Um, you know, um, it, it was it, grief is, is obviously uh, a big part of for us, our lives and um, suffering is a part of the Christian life. And, you know, there it's amazing that God even is able to pull from some of the darkest, deepest, messed up places in our lives, he's able to still bring those things about to, to show his glory, you know, to show yeah. his presence. You know, when we were in the You're hospital. You're a better man than me. My uh, goodness, I don't know how I would have done it, John. Uh, yeah, you know, um, we, you know, Krista and I have, have often said, like, um, we have this assurance that we will see her again. Um, yes, you will. You know, and so we have that hope and that is a very powerful thing for us. Um, you know, I, I pray for my children constantly that they will know Jesus and they'll walk with him. And, mm -hmm. and we have this hope now that we know that one of them has, one of them is with Jesus. And so, um, so that's an assurance, um, that we have. And, um, you know, for us, uh, it's extremely difficult and there's still moments that you know we carry this with us and we still very much treat her as a part of our family we still celebrate her birthday which is actually interestingly on our wedding anniversary um so that that makes that day again i think it while it's um painful and difficult it I, to me again i think it's a great metaphor for the christian life that you know, how do you so I can't, I'm trying to think, is there anything that would cause more grief in life? I, d I don't know. You, you know, know so how, uh, how do you, what do you say when, when people in your life and your circle are experiencing grief? Like, how do you, what do you say to them? Like, how would you encourage, if there's someone listening right now yeah. that is, you know, at rock bottom in grief, what do you say to that person? I'm sorry, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, um, that acknowledgement of pain being real. Um, but just because, um, 
the Lord is does not act or does or that things happen in our lives contrary to what we might believe or contrary to what we might want or expect of him does not mean he's not God and does not mean he's not able to bring you through this. Um, and, and that, and that's a, that's a constant struggle. Um, you know, grief is one of those interesting, um, things. I, I kind of consider it like a wave. Um, you know, there's yeah. times that the, there's times that it, it, it's out to sea and there's times that it comes in and crashes on you. Um, and you really have no control over those times. And, and if anything, it, it shows to, to me, this whole thing has shown to me that I, I'm not in control. Like I control is an illusion. <laughs> yes. in our lives. We try to take, um, we try to take control of our lives, but you know, all it, all it takes is, you know, is, is a phone call or, you know, an accident or one bad decision. Um, and our lives change, um, constantly. And so, uh, I have no hope to s other than Christ Jesus. And, and that's what my, uh, that's what Chris and I said when we were walking through the hallways on our way out of the hospital after losing Zoe, um, we named her Zoe grace. I should mention because Zoe means mm. life in the Greek and we, and grace means gift, right? So gift of life is how we mm -hmm. named her. Um, but anyways, uh, so, but as we were walking out of the hospital, uh, you know, we, we, I can distinctly remember us saying this, you know, you feel just the ache and the weight and just, I, I guess I can just say physically sore over what you've experienced, but God, um, to know that we could not do this without the Lord's help, you know, um, without the Lord's help, uh, we'd be, we would be, you know, we would be walking corpses, you know, uh, in mm -hmm. that regard. And, and, and even how that has played into, um, you know, our youngest son, his name is Jude Ezra and, uh, Jude is a derivative of Judah, which means praise the Lord and mm -hmm. Ezra means helper. And so we, we appropriately named him just after and in, in honoring Zoe, like she doesn't, he doesn't replace Zoe, um, mm -hmm. you know, cause he's his own character and we, Zoe's her own character in that sense. She's, her, uh, she's our daughter and he's our son, but we, you know, we have named him, in saying like often in scriptures as people say praise the lord for he has been my help and so yeah. we can we can testify to that to say with jude with ella with Emmett, with zoe the lord has been our helper all along um you know what can man do to me so that's that's yeah so, wow yeah you know that's that's you know but i mean in many cases you know suffering uh you know, I, I look at uh, other people who have suffered, you know, people who have had their children. I remember Krista uh, talking to another woman who had their child for just even like two hours before their child died, you know, um, and dealing with infant death in that regard. And, and Krista's like, I don't know how you, how you do that. Like, how do you, you know, mm -hmm. how, how do you face that? Like knowing that your child is dying, um, you know, or for people whose children have cancer. And, and for, for me, I'm like, I, I don't know how you do that. Like, how do you, you know, when we look at what other people have in, encountered and, and suffered through, you know, we find ourselves saying like, oh man, I don't know how they do that. And then there's people who say the same thing to us. How do you, how have you done that? How did you make it through that, that season of life? And the answer should always be, well, it's the Lord and it's yeah. his with us, his strength upholding us. Otherwise we're done. I'm, I'm saying this as a, uh, how shall I say, like, I, I, I can't relate, you know what I mean? I don't even, I, some, I forget the difference between sympathy and empathy, but like, mm, yeah, yeah, like, totally. I, I don't know, like, I, I've just never been where you've been, so I'm not trying to sound, yeah. but I'm just thinking of that verse in Philippians, you know, mm. I want to know Christ, right, and the power yeah. of his resurrection, yes, yeah. it doesn't stop there, yeah. and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, absolutely, you know, so the Christian walk, and again, if we're selling anything else, mm. we're selling it wrong. Yeah. Because yeah. the Christian walk yep. has suffering. And and, it and part of the it's it's part of the the you know mm. part of what a Christian is. Yep, there's power that comes from his resurrection, and we feel that power and we have that power, and then there's walking in suffering for jesus as well absolutely and and this is the thing about suffering nobody has a monopoly on suffering and what i mean by that is i'm not i'm not guaranteed now just because we've lost our daughter that 
something isn't going to happen to me in the future no. or hasn't happened to me since then. You know, um, we're still subject to the fallen nature right. of this world, to the fallen nature of our bodies, right. to the fallen nature of our thoughts, to, you know. Yep. And, and we still, we still like, I'm, you know, like I'm not guaranteed that something can't happen, you know, to my family. I'm not, I've not been given a pass just because I've, you know, suffered in a way, but, but the, the grace of that is, is knowing that, you know, um, that the Lord is, is near. Right. And that's, and that's mm. the thing about Philippians, right? Like, don't be anxious about anything. And the reason why we're not anxious about anything, the, the verse, near, very verse before yeah. it says the Lord is near and it's in his presence. There is pleasures forevermore in spite of all the, 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 the mess that we see. And it's caused us for, as a family to just long for heaven, you know, right. You know, which is a great thing. Um, to just long what is it Maranatha? Come quick, Lord Jesus. Right. Yeah. Come, Lord yeah. Jesus. Exactly. And that's and that's exactly where we are. But I'll, I will say about this is that my wife and I can look back on um, even the time leading up to uh, Zoe's death, and we can say that you know the Lord prepared us for it. Um, uh, he prepared us for it by um, uh, by just just the things that we were reading, the things that we were uh, speaking about together, the things we were preparing for. Um, and, and he continues to prepare us for things. I, I remember actually just, it was, it was a month before we lost Zoe. We read an article about, you know, the most often, um, overlooked quality in a spouse that people are, don't think to look for. And, and it was on suffering, like find someone you can suffer with. Right. And, you know, uh, that, that caused some good discussion for Krista and I, you know, we, we often think, uh, can I find someone who I can laugh with, that I can have fun with, that I can, you know, go on adventures with, that I can do all these things. And we don't often think about, can I suffer with this person? What's it going to be like yeah. when I suffer? Am I going to just close them off? Yeah. Um, or am I going to depend on them greatly? Or am, are they going to be able to help me, encourage me? And so, you know, and so all of that was, I, I think, um, I think it was the Lord saying to us, you know, and and even just where the church we were serving at that time was there was a lot of suffering going on at that time there's a lot of like people's houses were burning down people's marriages were in trouble and 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 all of this stuff and we were like wow like there's a lot going on around us it's so heavy isn't it you know and and, and that's the thing it's it's ministry it's it's that's the issue you're dealing with real life situations and you're seeing the real consequences of sin how mm -hmm. it affects people who who are, are in the situation, you know, they're not sinners, per, they're sinners, but they're not the ones committing the sin, and ha, yet how that affects them. And then for those who are committing the sin, how it affects them as well. And um, to be um, people who extend grace and and, and mm -hmm. build up with the gospel, um, you know, I, again, it was a moment for us. Well, good for you, Josh. I yeah. mean, a lot of people, probably myself included, would just have broken yeah, and it well, seems like I'm sure you did break, but I'm, yes, I mean, yeah, absolutely. We still, and we still do. There's still moments, you know, where you see things, you read things, you hear things, and you break, yeah. and that's okay. Like we we walk wounded as as a Christian life, you know that that's what it is. Yeah. We walk wounded, and that that is a that's a great thing, you know, because yeah. it means means that we are not walking by our own strength. We're walking by the strength of him. Who's Man, we're getting me. deep, eh? That's yeah. called maturity. Yeah, that's good. It's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So very true. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I'll transition a little bit. Sure. But, uh, I mean, we yeah. don't have to. We can no, keep absolutely. About that, Let's, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Maybe to a little bit more. Jo joyous time <laughs> part of christian walk too absolutely yes very so much i'm going to share some pictures with you and i want yep. you to just uh tell me what you feel and what you think when you see these pictures okay so bear with me while i share my screen okay oh no here we go <laughs> okay yeah all right just one moment here what do you think when you, do you see can you see that picture oh yeah <laughs> uh, shot. yeah how old yeah that was what our, uh, our third year or that might have been no probably no, that was our first year i think well my first year i think it was your second yeah 
So yeah, yeah there we go, man. I, so many thoughts. <laughs> There's so many. Okay. I, and Jarvis, if you're listening to this, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say this Jarvis, man, he made that guy made camp so enjoyable on so many yes, levels. Oh yes, man. I got to get him on the podcast. Oh man. I, I've been looking at him, but I don't know if you remember, there was this one morning and forgive me i hope oh man there we go <laughs> yeah for the people listening just tell them what you're seeing oh man i'm seeing uh i've seen pictures of us guy staff here yeah and i look like a kid, a kid. <laughs> we all look like kids yes i know man oh man yes uh look how blonde you know, look, that's was. really kids check this one out yeah Yes, there we are. <laughs> yes, I know. You look more redheaded that. there. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's the look at all those guys. Man. I think we were fifteen or so. You know. Yes. 15, yeah. Good 16. times. Yeah, I've good got my times. little wine shirt on and my yeah. <laughs> yeah, good times. Yeah. I was saying, uh, I remember one time when Jarvis. It was it was on the weekend. Us guys, I don't know what we were doing, but it was it was it was in the morning one time, and you know where the guys loft. We were up in the guys' loft, and I don't know for some reason I think Jarvis was in his underwear. Forgive me if this is too much, but Jarvis was in his underwear, and I think it was Jeremy dared him to run to the end of the hallway, and then run back. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, let me stop the sharing for a second. So oh sure, yeah, see. sure. Okay, so I think it's back. Yeah, it's back to you now. So tell me the story about Jarvis. <laughs> I remember Jar Jarvis for some reason was in his underwear and, uh, yeah, you know, and, and Jeremy said to him, Hey Jarvis, I dare you to run to the end of the hallway, touch the, in your underwear, touch the board and then run back. <laughs> and I think everybody else, but Jarvis knew what Jeremy was thinking. So yeah. Jarvis ran down the hallway to touch the bulletin yeah. board. And of course we were all there, you know, out the door and we slammed the door shut to hold him <laughs> and keep him out. Yeah. And uh, the girls yeah. were in their side of the loft. And I think um, if I recall, you know, Jarvis was like pounding on the door to get back in. And, and the girls were like, what's going on out there? He's like, no, no, don't come out. Don't come out. <laughs> and we opened the door to let him back in. And Jarvis had taken the carpet runner that was yeah, in the hallway. So and he's laying that's on so the ground. Gross. And he had wrapped himself up in it to try and cover himself before <laughs> getting back. Oh, man, it was great. Yeah, oh, it, it was, was great. Funny. So, Jarvis, thank you. That one, you know, sticks in my mind often when I think about camp. Yeah. And great memories yeah. there. Um, what about, uh, let me show you another one. What about yes. this? Tell me what do you think about this. What are we looking at here? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, doing the actions and everything. Yeah. Tell wow. me about chapel, though. Man, those times in chapel, some awesome times. I mean, I'll, I'll say this, like, um, as far as music goes, uh, that was very formative for me um, because, I mean, I remember my first summer and full time at camp, I like I had never played guitar or led worship in front of I mean, I maybe have picked it up like I was playing guitar and learning chords and things like that. But I, you know, uh, when I was asked to be involved in the music side of things, I was like, OK, but I was not competent at all. And uh, thankfully, I remember, you know, uh, Sheila and Fiona, Fiona, especially just being like, you can do this, you got this. And I had some times that where things just did not go well. <laughs> you yeah. know, I had some moments, but, uh, you know, I'm thankful because uh, that was, again, formative for me to just develop confidence in leading and playing. And um, it's something that I still uh, feel very attached to in ministry is, is music. And, um, yeah. you know, so I'm thankful for that development there. Um, yeah, that's been great. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so we, let me, I'm just going to finish the story. We spent four years on staff that yeah. you, uh, or you were three or four years. Three. Yeah. Three I was three. there for three years and I worked at a church the following, I would, you know, uh, once I finished at college, so I didn't end up. Then you back. spent some time, you said out West and then you moved mm -hmm. to PEI and you were pastoring yep. a church here. Mm -hmm. how, how have you been connected to Malagash, you know, in the past 10 years? Well, um, so uh, Malagash, again, when I was out West, uh, you know, I, 
I was involved at camps out there, um, speaking and uh, being involved as a, as a speaker out there. And as soon as I got back to, I guess I should say, there was one summer just after Chris and I were married, we were out west, but we came home and we directed at, at Malagash one summer. And I think that was the summer that we did the, the uh, staff soccer game. Uh, we did that at like five in the morning or something because we oh, wanted, really? yeah, we, we, we told the, 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 um, counselors the night before, uh, and, uh, we said, Hey, we're going to get up like super early at like four 30 in the morning. We're going to get ourselves all ready and we're going to walk into the cabins and we're going to get them up to go play a soccer game super oh early in the morning. I have so, heard the story. Yeah. So we, uh, so the staff was all for it. So, you know, they did their usual, they had the war paint and everything. And we went in and we just blasted them. And of course the kids, a lot of them were not even wanting to come and we had to pick up some and drag them on the, on the mattresses to um, yeah. line up so they could get ready to go play soccer. And it was, it was awesome. I think the no, staff won that year. That. So, yeah. yeah it was, it was great. That. So, that is fun. Yeah. So we did that. And, uh, but anyways, um, we came back when we came back to the Island about nine years ago or so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm trying to remember who it was I reached out to, but I said, look, if you're looking for a speaker, I'm happy to, okay. to be involved. And so I, I've, I've spoken there, um, you know, most of the summers I've been back in Prince Edward Island. Um, I know there's a couple, like obviously with COVID uh, that has uh, caused a few things to, uh, and things not to work out, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, um, I love taking my family there. Um, they love coming with me to Malagash. Mm -hmm. It's a great time together. We have lots of great memories of being at Malagash and, uh, um, well, we want you to stay connected. Come yeah. to family camp and yes, I know we've, we've talked about going to family camp. We would actually really love to do that. Um, I directed know. the mini family camp this yeah. year. Yeah. It's, we had 105 people there. That's great. We That's packed great. it out, and uh, that yeah. was like just we had just entered phase four, sort of thing, and everyone hadn't been around people for such a long time. We yeah. had an absolute blast. Oh man, yeah, I'll make it work, uh, man. Yes, it's, it's I would love to, and I know my kids would love to. You know, they're they're at the age now where they're starting to go to camp and and uh, loving yeah. that, that side. Yeah, of camp. very cool. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke of Jarvis. Yeah, I have a funny question for you. Who do you think would win? in a fight to the death <laughs> Jarvis or Paul Hubble oh my goodness <laughs> I don't know Paul's like Paul Paul is quick and, and uh, <laughs> Jarvis okay. would like bite and scratch yeah and see that's eye. it yeah <laughs> yes exactly well Jarvis yeah he could get he could he could pull out the rage <laughs> and, I, and I think but I think that's it I think Paul's more like self-controlled and and yet yeah you know, uh, strategic, like I, yeah. from what I recall of, of Paul, you know, he's, he's much more strategic. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe it depends on what kind of day it is. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. uh, there are probably, yeah. probably times, but uh, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Mm. Well, I, I'm going to close here, but mm -hmm. we've been, we've been, it's been an hour. So wow. we've talked for an hour. Yeah, that's right. It um, Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so any parting words or, or anything you want to oh, say? Man, man. Uh, for those who are uh, involved at Malagash Bible Camp, I guess I got to just say like those who have been influence of my life and those who continue to be an yeah. influence on campers lives. Uh, thank you. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have family that's been involved at Malagash who have been an incredible influence on me and then just great friends such as yourself. You yeah. know, I, I look back to those moments as very very crucial uh for me in my walk and so for those those of you who are maybe considering being involved at malagash uh, do it like if you can be a part of it like we i think what's what malagash has and what i really appreciate about malagash is just solid uh, staff who who love jesus and want to see we got to keep them jesus solid jesus. we need a new crop yes. coming up because yes. uh covet has thrown a pick them on right. a lot of things and uh right. we need more volunteer staff right now which right. we never had trouble before yeah but yeah. we're trouble we're having trouble getting volunteers and which means that our pool to draw from full-time staff isn't as i'll say this frankly but sensitively isn't as strong as it has been in the past yeah. so uh, whoever's listening let's, let's yeah. we want you you know yeah exactly and this and this is it you know it's one of the things i've appreciated about malagash is that it's not just they'll take anyone 
Yeah. Know, there is a level of maturity there. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I do really sincerely appreciate that because I think that that um, depth of maturity really shows uh, an emphasis on you, you want the kids who are there to, to really. Um, yeah, we want committed to. Christians yes. living the life. Yeah. You know, reading their Bibles. Like yeah. we, we want, you know, and we want the Absolutely. best. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, thankful for Malagash and for everybody who has been a part of Malagash over the years, you know, it's just such yeah. a great spot. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Josh. Appreciate your time tonight and God bless everyone. Thank you, brother Andy.